Hey guys, welcome back to r slash relationship advice where today we read a story about a husband who insists that his wife, in case he dies, puts his skull above her fireplace. Without any further ado, let's dive right into the stories. And the first one is titled, My 36 female husband, 41 male, has some strange requests for after he has passed away. And maybe guys, a slight little trigger warning for this story in advance. Anyway, this one is really bizarre and I'm sorry ahead of time. My husband of 12 years has had some medical problems recently, the topic about end of life plans came up and I asked if he wanted to be buried. He didn't want that, nor did he want to be cremated. My husband wants me to have his skull taken from his body and cleaned. Then he wants that skull put on the mantelpiece in the living room and the rest of his body he wants sent to one of those places that makes the gems out of bodies and made into two blue diamonds. And by the way guys, I don't really understand here what the OP means by gems out of bodies. If anyone understands what the OP means, please let us know in the comments what it is. Anyway, he then wants those gems to be put in the eye socket of the skull to look like eyes. Then he can watch the family home and be passed down through the generations. My husband has always had a morbid slash culturally insensitive sense of humor. As such, when he had mentioned it before he was sick, I thought he was joking. Turns out though, he is not joking. He even asked me to do it too, so our skulls and matching eye gems can stay above the fireplace together. I adamantly refused. I tried talking to him, but he is firm that this is what he wants. I told him that it made me uncomfortable, but he said it was also for our kids to have. Who are, by the way, not currently old enough to weigh in on this discussion. I asked if this was his way of trying to live on with the family even after death and he said, no, not really. I asked where he wanted the extra cremated remains from the gem company spread and he told me that he didn't want any remains and to just have the biggest gems possible made and have the company dispose of the rest. I argued that he had no idea if his children would want the literal skull of their father, further which child would take the skull after I died. And in two or three generations, how would he feel if slash when his descendants just sold this bizarre human skull at a garage sale because it means nothing to them? And finally, how was he going to feel about the fact that I, in my grief and trying to process the loss of him, would likely never take that skull out of the box, much less have to live with him staring at me every time I sat on the couch? He essentially was not worried or didn't care about any of it and regarding not taking it out of the box, it is the only time he seemed upset. He told me that that was what he wanted and I would be ignoring his final wishes. I told him that he didn't have to live with those final wishes for years to come, but it didn't matter. Part of me wants to get over my feelings, but I cannot. I want to cry thinking of someone hacking apart my husband and handing me his bones and I feel anxiety over the thought of putting that skull with his blue eyes in my home until I die. I am fine if he wants a burial, I am fine with cremation, viking funeral, that weird thing where they turn you into tree food, whatever. I am even fine with the gems on their own, but this whole skull thing is really bothering me. He won't budge and he is not joking. At this point I am thinking I would just do a simple cremation after he passes and spread his ashes on our property, but that seems sneaky and dishonest. However, there is absolutely no way that I can comfortably live with what he is asking if he passes away before me. What do I do Reddit? Edit, I didn't expect this to get the attention it has and I am grateful for so many of the responses. At the end of the day, I want my husband to feel listened to, respected and loved. This process has cemented to me that I definitely will not be putting his skull on my mantle until I die, but there were many compromises and ideas suggested that I'm going to think about. When it feels right, I will suggest some of them to him. For now, I am going to sign off and give my husband a big hug and think about this for a few days. Edit number two, he knows this post exists now, we've had a good conversation, we have laughed a fair amount over the sheer ridiculousness of this hitting the front page and the comments it brought and we both are confident we can reach a compromise that makes us both comfortable. 
We aren't going to talk about it all today, we are just gonna get pizza, cuddle and tell each other dumb jokes for the rest of the day. Good night Reddit. And yeah guys, I would love to hear what you think about this story. Do you think that OP should respect the wishes of her husband no matter what? Or would you say that the husband is selfish and maybe even insensitive? Let us know what you think in the comments. A person in the comments said, I think he is really underestimating the amount of carbon needed to create a gemstone. He is not getting two eye-sized stones out of himself unless he is 9 foot 4 and made out of bison meat. Another user said, I don't know what to say about the skull thing, but maybe you could do the gems. Use part of his ashes to make a necklace pendant for each of your kids to receive at an appropriate age. That is what my aunt and her sister did with their mother's ashes. Another user said, it might not be legal, there are a lot of regulations on handling human remains, so give him the task of researching the legality and finding companies that will do it and determining the cost and acquiring a term life insurance policy that would cover those costs. He may discover that it is not legal and that will be that. Also make sure he understands that if his gem slash skull does not match your future interior decorating choices, it will go in a box in the garage. And if none of the kids want it, they will sell it to an oddities shop. Which not gonna lie guys, sounds pretty cruel in my opinion. Another user said, speaking as someone who lost their dad at 16, 11 years now, I can tell you it would be extremely disturbing to see his skull. For some morbid odd reason, the thought has occurred to me once or twice that by now his corpse has probably withered away to the bone and I picture him lying there, no longer looking like my dad, but a skeleton. It's a horrible image. Please don't actually do that to your kids, they shouldn't have to see that, it is best if he is immortalized forever in their minds young and whole. As an alternative, you could have his ashes made into enough gems for you and your kids, only if you can afford this of course, fitted on appropriate pieces of jewelry that each one could wear and carry with them throughout life. He could be there with his kids for all their milestones and achievements, but also a source of comfort and protection during hard times. This is probably what he really wants deep down and he has come up with the most fantastical and extreme way he could think of achieving this. And yeah guys, then I did a lot of digging in the comment section and it seemed like that OP and her husband actually agreed on an alternative, which is not even... Well, it does not even compare to what he originally suggested. According to the comment I saw, the husband is now just going to get buried in case he dies. Which, not gonna lie guys, seems kind of weird considering the wishes he had prior to this, but I suppose the wife can be very persuasive. And the next one is titled, I, 17 male, just found out that my sister, 35, is actually my mother. My sister was not around much when I was growing up because she was in college and then medical school. She would visit on holidays and the weekends if she was not busy, whenever she would visit she would spend a lot of time with me and she would take me places, buy me things and give me advice when I needed it. I always felt like I could tell her anything and she would not judge me for it. She never really got along with our parents and I never knew what it was about, but they would argue often and there was always a lot of tension around them. My parents were very loving and we got along, so no issues there. When she started dating her now husband, she spent less time with me and she would come over less often. Five years ago, she got married to the guy, I don't like him at all. He is like an overgrown frat guy and he is always teasing me or saying dumb stuff, he can never read the room. I have spoken to my sister about it but she says that it is just his way of bonding with people and that he means well and is a nice guy. He has been a pain in the butt for 5 years and just when I was going to give him a chance, he screwed up. My sister and her husband came over for dinner 2 nights ago and were going to sleep over because they live 2 hours away. He took that as an opportunity to drink as much as he wanted, he is already insufferable when sober, so drunk him is even worse. My sister and I were catching up because it has been a while and I was telling her how I would like to go into the medical field like her. Jackass husband then comes in saying that it is great that I want to follow in my mom's footsteps. 
My mom has never worked in the medical field, so I was confused and thought he was just being dumb, but my sister's face went so pale and my parents were very quiet. I just looked at my sister and could tell that it wasn't just a dumb comment. I locked myself in my room and didn't come out until the next day. There was a lot of yelling and I just learned something huge, so I didn't want to deal with it. When I finally decided to leave the room, I saw that my sister was sitting right outside the door and that jerk was gone. I asked her what the hell was going on and told her not to lie to me or I will never speak to her again. She told me that she got pregnant in her senior year of high school and the guy cut all contact with her. She wanted to keep me and our parents were fully supportive of her. She found out that she got into her dream school, but she would have to either give up the school or give me up. She couldn't choose, so she decided to keep both. She spoke to our parents about it and the plan was to have them take care of me while she is in school and when she can she will take me back. I was supposed to grow up knowing that she is my mom, but because she was so busy and stressed out, she didn't think that she could handle motherhood. Our parents noticed that she was pulling away, so they adopted me and raised me as theirs. She said that she was young and dumb at the time, so she agreed with the adoption. She said that she thought of dropping out and taking me back so many times, but thought I was better off without her as a mom. As the years went by, she saw less reason to tell me since I was doing good and was being well taken care of. She started crying and telling me that she regrets her decision and wants to be my mom even though I am almost an adult, she wants us to start over as mother and son. I told her that I would think about it and then she left. I went to speak to my parents, they told me that they did everything for me because they love me and I'm not obligated to leave now that I know. They said that things don't have to change if I don't want them to, it seemed more like they didn't want things to change. I feel like my whole life is a lie, I know that I was well taken care of and I don't want to seem ungrateful, but I was lied to my whole life. I don't see myself calling my sister mom and living life as if everything is okay. My parents are the ones who raised me, so how could I just leave them like that? On the other hand, if I don't decide to go with my sister, she might feel like I am rejecting her or that I hate her and after 17 years, she might really give up on me. I'm so torn and feel betrayed, I cannot believe that I found out from that a-hole. That makes me even more mad, I feel like I have to pick a side, I don't know how to do that. I kind of just want to run away and forget about all of this. Everyone is kind of leaving it up to me and I don't even know what I want for breakfast on a good day. How do I approach this without everyone getting hurt? And a user in the comments suggested, I know you have a lot of advice here and I don't have the same story as yours, but it does remind me of my own life. My mom had me when she was 15, of course she was just a kid herself and still lived with my grandparents, hence I lived with them as well. Long life story short, my mom has always been a, as much as it pains me to say this because I do love her dearly, she just has always seemed to make decisions I could never comprehend and still cannot to this day. It is so frustrating, this woman. F up. When she was old enough to move on her own, she was like 23 I think, she did and me and my 3 year old sister stayed with my grandparents. Now, I never have called my grandma and grandpa mom and dad, they've always been our nana and papa, but as I am older I realize how much they do deserve the titles of mom and dad and they know it. Mother's Day and Father's Day are always particularly emotional as we have these amazing grandparents who really are the main stable, mature parental figures in our lives that we all know deserve these titles, but we just still stick with Nana and Papa. They have been there every step of the way, not to say my mom hasn't, as she has been there for the majority of the big events in my life, but not the ones like parents do, where they have to drag you to school, every soccer practice, dentist appointment, etc. I know my mom is my mom, but my grandparents are really parents and I don't know what I would have done without them. When my mom was stable enough to finally get us and take care of us on her own, I was 15. 
I stayed with her until I was about 19 until I realized I wanted to be home and moved back in at my grandparents house while my sister stayed with my mom. So yeah, I am now 21 and back at home and of course I will always love my mom and she knows that but she also knows it was best for me to be back at home with my grandparents. Honestly, I just say do what your heart desires, I cannot imagine the pain you felt to know you were lied to, but I know there is so much love in your story and don't worry about who you may hurt in the end, do what you think is best for you and I am sure, or at least I hope, your family will support you in whatever decision you make. Just know that your parents love you and wanted to give you a life that they thought would have been better than what your mom could have. And guys, if you have watched until here and enjoy the stories about relationships, then please don't forget to post some stars in the comments and maybe even like the video if you want to support my channel. Thank you so much in advance. Update to the I just found out that my sister is actually my mother's story. Just for clarification, sister is my bio mom and parents are my grandparents. I first want to say thank you guys so much, I didn't think that I would get this much feedback, I started a family group chat and suggested that we should look into family therapy, everyone is on board and is willing to do whatever it takes to make the situation work. I am very lucky and I can see my privilege, many kids don't get what I got, a loving family, so maybe I was making this a bigger deal than it was. My sister said that she is going to make more of an effort to be in my life. I think therapy might be good for us. As for douchebag husband, my sister really wants us to get along, but I don't see that happening. Maybe he should come to therapy a few times, but only if he is serious about it. She is very mad at him, but she wants to work things out with him. Also, it was really interesting reading stories from people who have experienced something similar or know someone who did, it is crazy how often and common these things are, I guess until you experience something for yourself, it can seem unbelievable. It was inspiring to read and some of them were heartbreaking and made me realize that I shouldn't let my anger make the decisions because life is short. My parents are not getting any younger. I would not want my last moments with them being something so negative, they still have to earn my trust but I don't see why we cannot be on at least okay terms while they do. They have been extremely apologetic since but actions speak louder than words so we will see. Another issue that arose is the fact that I don't know where the other half of me came from, my biological father basically disappeared from my sister's life, I don't know if I should even bring it up because no one else has yet. That will be another topic of discussion for therapy I guess. Thank you so much to those of you who were genuinely trying to be helpful and kind, I got a lot of support, again thank you. And sadly ripe stars, we have already reached the end of the video, however as usual if you cannot get enough of my videos, I would suggest you to check out my endless binge watch playlist which will show up very soon on the left side of the screen. In addition, please don't forget to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash ripe YouTube for more exclusive Reddit content. Mainly, at least at the moment, just no mother-in-law videos. In addition guys, I would just like to say we are super super close to 50,000 subscribers, so I would really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel. It would be a dream come true to finally reach 50k. Thank you so much in advance and I hope to see you again tomorrow.